Corner taken by Puller. Haswell takes Hatch. Who gets the shot? Watching Kello's bootlaces. You are indeed watching Kello's bootlaces. What a fantastic intro from a guy that's given so much for three months. He's made such a difference to our season, hasn't he? I think he's been here three months, 18, 19 games, a load of clean sheets. He's, just, he's a guy that just you love being around, isn't he? Yeah. As we'll see later. Yeah. But great intro. I can imagine he's a real character in the changing room. Oh, I, was, I was watching before the game. He goes around giving everybody the old hug, wasn't he? And <laughs> the, the ovation at the end. I thought it was quite interesting for me because when he was here earlier in the season with Brentford, he was winding everybody up on the big bank. <laughs> so he's the kind of guy that is the old cheeky grin and he wins them all over. Well, more from Ben Hamer in this week's show. Later on, we'll catch up with him and we'll catch up with Arthur Kryziak, his thoughts ahead of coming back into the team. We've also got Paul Dickoff, Paul Tisdale and Scott Goldborn. So an interview fest this week. No reaction from the Tranmere game because of production deadlines, but we will, of course, be talking about all things Argyle in the final part of this week's Keller's Bootlaces. But, Kirky, yeah. five wins on the bounce now and, and, and never in doubt today, was it? Well, it's funny because the first half an hour, I didn't really think we hit top gear. We were OK, and I thought, actually, Oldham started better than we did. And then, all of a sudden, bang, they have a corner. And before you know it, we've broken out a three-man attack. Superb goal. Scott Goulburn, left back. Yeah. Right wing, one of the best goals of the season, yeah. I think. Great that run, we scored it? here at the Great park. run, and like you say, after we got the second goal, particularly, never in doubt. I mean, with City, you're never quite sure a two-nil lead is it if they score from a corner or whatever. But <laughs> sort it out, you know. No, I was talking to Logie at half time, and he was saying, "Game's over, Foolsy. Game's over." I said, "Just remember Odom up there, Logie." Yeah. No, game's over, Foolsy. Game's <laughs> over. And uh, I, I didn't think it was ever in doubt today, mate. I, Oldham came back into it second half. They looked a different team when they came out second half. But we defended so well, and you've also got Hamer at the back. He made a couple of great saves, and, yeah. and I always thought we were going to get another one on the break, so I, I was confident. Confident, more confident than me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get some views on the game now, and we'll start with the away manager, Paul Dickoff. Paul, your thoughts on the game? Um, disappointed with my team's first half performance. Um, you know, when everything that's good about us is when we play um, at high energy and we move the ball quickly, I felt we're a bit lethargic, a um, little bit sloppy, um, possibly taking too many touches on the ball, you know. and um, as, as good a side as Exeter are, you, you know you can't come to places like this and give mm. teams a good a, a two goal start. You know they're on a fantastic run at the minute. They're a good footballing team, and um, two mistakes have cost us. You disappointed with the nature of the goals that you conceded? Yeah, very, very. But you know because we work a lot on set pieces for and against. Um, we work a lot on organisation, and you know we've from our corner you have broke um, and, and scored a goal. You know great goal from your point of view. Um, mm. Sloppy. From mine, the second goal as well, with a couple of chances to clear it, put her foot through the ball, try to take too many touches in the ball again. You know, and you've got somebody like Jamie Curitan hanging around the box. I've known Jamie a long time. Um, you know, you're, you're always got the chance of conceding a goal. But apart from that, you know, I spoke speaking to my goalkeeper, Dean Brill, there, you know, he's, he's a two shots on target, and mm. we've lost two now. Second half, I thought, oh, excellent. I thought we moved the ball really well, um, made a right good goal. But I've said to my players as well, you know, it shouldn't take me to give them a rollicking at half time to go out and have the second half performance. I was going to say you looked a different team second half, played with a lot more confidence and played a bit more football. So I guess when you're two 0 down, you're just waiting for the half time whistle to be able to get in there and, and g them up again. I wouldn't say so much g them up. Um, you know, they, they told a few home truths at half time. You know, and expected a reaction. I got it for them. You know, I keep telling them that. You know, but when. When we play at high tempo and we move the ball quickly, we're a good team and not a lot of teams can, can keep mm. up with us. When we don't, that, that's when we struggle and we struggled first half today. What do you look to from your players at this, this time of the season? Because you know, you're know you safe, perhaps the playoffs are a bit too far. You, you've obviously got players that you're looking at, whether to re-sign mm -hmm. them. Do you expect a bit more character from them to prove something to you? Um, yeah, I expect that from them regardless of what position we are in the league. You know, Every time they go out on a football pitch, it has to mean something. Whether you're looking over your shoulder or looking up the table, or people keep saying, and I hate the saying, "I've nothing to play for." You have, you know, you've got mm. a point to prove every time you go out on a football pitch, and attitudes, everything, and you know, to be fair to them, as sloppy as we were first half, they've been fantastic this year. Mm. You know, they're a young squad that starting to live in today. You know, our oldest player was 24. Mm. You know, for a 17-year-old in the pitch, an 18-year-old in the pitch, um, a couple of 19-year-olds as well. You know, and it's 24, 22. And then all the rest are 20 and under, you know. So for that point of view, the, the future looks fantastic because they're good young kids who want to learn. Um, but, the, you know, the future starts now. And Paul Dickoff still enjoying management? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, you know, big learning curve for me. I love my football. I'm enthusiastic about my football. Um, you know, I want to learn. I want to be better every day. Um, I want my players to be better every day. And, um, you know, I'll keep learning and keep doing my best. Thanks very much, Paul. No problem. Cheers. 
Well, I have to say, Fawzi, I thought you did a great interview there. I know we say this every week, but you know, we're never quite sure whether he's going to come in. We're never quite <laughs> sure whether he wants to speak. And uh, we look at each other and say, who's doing the, in- the interview? And uh, your question about enjoying management, he's, he's done pretty well, hasn't he? Yeah, well, he's, he's another one of these, a bit like Tiz. He's a young and upcoming manager, isn't he? Mm. He probably had a longer career in the game playing than, yeah. than Tiz has, but... Yeah. He's enjoying it, and yeah. it's, it's the next step for, for some, isn't it? And he's not doing a half bad job, really. Well. Good to ask you. We always say you've got the best seat in the house. What, what was he like down on the old? Uh, he was very quiet. Was he very quiet? Yeah, he wasn't a ranter or a, a screamer. He he made a lot of eyes at the fourth official today because he felt a lot of decision went against him. But he he wasn't a ranter. He he was just very calm and, and very placid on the sidelines. There. Very good. Well, that's it for part one of this week's Keller's Bootlaces. Coming up in part two, we'll catch up with not one but two goalkeepers. <laughs>